I want to cover two main topics today. I want to cover um, a brief, very brief introduction into digital asset management, um, just to make sure that we all have the same understanding and I give you some of my opinions of digital asset management. Um, I've been working in this area for about eight years now with various companies, so um, I'd like to think that I have a general understanding of the industry at the moment. And the second part of the presentation will concentrate on Artesia as a company. Who are we, what do we do, and what have we done for our customers? So giving you some specific examples of people like Discovery Networks in Europe, BBC in England, um, and other companies that Artesia have worked with. So the first question is, what is digital asset management? Um, there are many opinions as to a definition for digital asset management, and the next series of slides just give you some indication as to what I believe digital asset management represents and what Artesia can provide in that area. Many people think that a digital asset is literally just a piece of media, a photo, a video clip, and so on. It is essentially what a digital asset is made up of, but the, the additional data that accompanies the digital asset file is really what makes a single digital asset. I recognise that most of the audience here today are from a broadcasting background, so what we've tried to do is, is give you some indications of typical asset types in both broadcast and brand and publishing areas, some of which you may recognise. So the important thing um, about a digital asset is that essentially it has a value to the company that produced or managed it. Now that may be a financial value in its production, it may be a cultural value or it may be a business value. But there is a huge amount of value tied up in digital assets that require management. The next slide shows some of the typical questions that our customers ask us. These are um, just a selection of the typical problems that some of our customers face. Um, for broadcasters, a common question is, how do I manage my rights management? So these are some of the typical questions that suggest to us that there is a general confusion about the way that digital assets can be used and managed. Um, and I think you've probably seen some of these questions yourself or have other questions very similar to these. One of the keys to the digital asset management challenge is the fact that assets can be produced by any part of an organisation. In other words, there are what we call multiple stakeholders to the asset management piece, and there are multiple ways of using those assets. Um, perhaps they want to use the web, perhaps you want to use broadcast channels or publications. And these challenges lead to a number of problems themselves. Um, problems in efficiency, problems with human error. How often have you had a um, tape that you've had to courier or send to somebody and it's got lost or duplicated, problems in communication of those assets. This leads us to what we believe to be our definition of digital asset management, which is the fact that you need a coordinated set of technologies to help you manage the processes that control the assets in your organisation. Um, they could be any type of assets in any organisation, but the, the game of digital asset management is to enable people to get the right content in the right format, in the right place at the right time. And the result of all of these challenges should be a streamlined process where information is shared between all of the necessary people in an organisation, where everybody can see what everybody else is working on, and information doesn't become a barrier to production. So that is, is really where we see the definition of digital asset management. And I'm sure many of you have very similar views, perhaps additional um, opinions there too. But I wanted to start the presentation just by giving that that baseline, if you like, of how we see digital asset management. You've decided that your organisation produces lots of media. Media has tremendous value in your organisation and you could improve efficiencies or processes by managing that media. What will digital asset management do for you? If you look in the market for software solutions for digital asset management, you'll see there is a huge number of companies providing these type of solutions. And they range from the departmental solution right up to the enterprise-wide solution. And of course, the price tags for these products match the, the requirements. Nevertheless, irrespective of which product you select, um, you should aim, and this is an industry figure, for a break-even on the investment in that product within about 12 months. And what that means is that um, your investment in the software package that you've chosen will be repaid um, several fold over just by cost savings, revenue enhancement opportunities and strategic advantage, which means that your competition is um, greatly improved. Where can you use digital asset management? 
Digital asset management can be used across all industry sectors. Now I recognise that the majority of the people in the room today are broadcast centric, so I don't think there's too much um, need to go into the other areas, but still within a broadcast environment your organisation has a brand and that brand has a value and you want your brand to be promoted with the material you're producing. So other areas of digital asset management can inc include any of those items. Digital asset management solution that you implement in your organisation needs to have a certain set of characteristics. It needs to be open and it needs to be flexible, firstly. It needs to be open because no doubt you have other systems in your organisation that this needs to integrate with. In the case of broadcast environments, you will probably have other software like scheduling systems, tape management systems that all need to integrate into an asset management solution. And if your system is flexible and if it's built on open standards, then it makes it a lot easier to do that integration. As a, as a software vendor, you're probably surprised that we put up there it must work all of the time. But you'd be surprised how many systems that concentrate on the handling of rich media do not remain effective for 99% of the time. Now, given the other points on the slide, um, one of the other major essential characteristics of a digital asset management system is that it has to be easy to use. And why does it have to be easy to use? Well, if it's not easy to use, the users won't use it, it won't be adopted, and you'll end up with a system that isn't giving you the efficiencies that you should be getting. The next slide um, I've found to be very useful in the past because in this area, you find that terminology can be very confusing. And there are a whole range of different titles or groups, if you like, that software can be categorised into. And what I'll try to do on this slide is explain the difference between those categories. So firstly, you have the document and content management systems. What's the difference between document and content management and digital asset management? Well, the essential difference is that document and content management concentrate on text and graphics. Digital asset management concentrates on a whole lot of different assets. There are business content management solutions that concentrate on alphanumeric data, business critical data. It's a bit faint, but there are e-commerce catalogues that concentrate on the production of textual and graphical catalogues for the web. There's the web content management piece, which is all about authoring web pages. So they, they appear to have a breadth of different content types that can be used to author web pages, but it's all about the production process for building websites. And finally, you have this piece called digital asset management which has a breadth of capability across different types and within those types, but it doesn't necessarily concentrate on one particular channel, like the web or, or print. That was about the different types of products that you see. How do they all come together? What is the, the cornerstone behind these different types of products? Uh, if you've looked at the market at all in the last um, perhaps 12 to 18 months, you'll notice that some companies have been taken over by other companies, um, other companies have simply gone out of business. But what every company is trying to do is to get to this ideal situation where they have digital asset management at the heart of all of the content management facilities they provide. So looking at digital asset management as a whole now, we've looked at the positioning of digital asset management and we've looked at the difference between it and other products. What does digital asset management do for you as a business? The first thing to, to point out um, about digital asset management is that it provides something called asset orientation. What does that mean? Basically it means that an asset can be used in a variety of different ways and isn't tied to any one particular use. Perhaps you have a video which is on physical media, like a tape. Perhaps you need um, a streaming media version of the video. And perhaps you need some still frames from that video. A digital asset management system allows you to hold all of those different types of media together and create a relationship between them. So as an organisation, you're getting value from the way these different formats are used and the way they can be used by other people. To be successful, a digital asset management system has to reach into the creative department. It has to closely connect with people that are doing creative jobs to enable them to deposit their information in the system and work on the information without any cultural change to the way they do their job. So perhaps you've got a video clip that is being edited in a rough cut editing suite and you need to take assets, um, perhaps images, logos to put into the video or you need to take a dub, an audio dub to put into the video. They should all be sourced from the digital asset management system so you know which assets have been used when and where. 
A digital asset management system also has to have many faces or many facets. Um, there's no point having the world's best digital asset management system and no way of getting at the assets. So it needs to be flexible in the way that interfaces can be provided and that goes back to the open standards. And finally, the digital asset management system has to be flexible enough for you to integrate with your applications. It needs to fit into your supply chain. Whether that supply chain is internal or external to your business, it needs to coordinate all the people that are involved in your business. And finally in this section, this slide just reiterates those points about asset orientation, support for all types of media and content, creative links and enterprise architecture. So this slide is really a reminder for you to, to cover those points. But all of these characteristics of a digital asset management are very important in a successful system. So um, this brings us on to the, the next section about um, what can you expect to get from a digital asset management system. Um, I'm not really going to spend too much time on this particular section. Um, all the information is there for you to see, but needless to say, Artesia has a methodology that helps customers achieve a return on their investment. And um, if you're interested, I can provide a white paper at the end of this session that will, will help you to apply those rules inside your own organisation. Um, so briefly, these are the typical headings that the methodology addresses. Um, the most important thing about developing a return on investment strategy for your business is to be clear about you, what you expect the digital asset management system to do. So be clear in your scope, understand your scope and stick to the scope. Um, that way you can achieve a very quick return on a very simple part of the business and prove the return on investment. And whether or not you, you work with Artesia or any other company in this space, this is a good set of steps to walk through in determining um, the requirements for your digital asset management system. In terms of um, return on investment metrics, I won't cover this slide, but I will pick on two particular customers that have some staggering um, return on investment figures. Now, you might not think a company like General Motors is a traditional broadcaster, but General Motors have a huge amount of video content. And General Motors believe that over the next five years, using a digital asset management system based on Artesia, they will save £22 million. And another similar organisation, Daimler Chrysler, uh, were about to shoot um, a photo shoot recently. And they estimated the cost of the photo shoot and all the promotional material at something like $1.5 million. When they looked a little bit closer, they realised that most of the assets they needed were already inside their digital asset management system, and they could find them a lot easier now. So in the space of a week, the $1.5 million photo shoot was reduced to $100,000. Now, not everybody can um, highlight such extreme examples, but um, to give you some idea... Sorry, it's the next slide. To give you some idea of intangible benefits, um, this is some potential savings that can be made. And when you add up some of these figures, it takes five minutes for one person, um, for every five minutes spent creating a document, I'm sorry, it takes a minute to locate. When you add that up over a whole organisation, that's a huge amount of time and money. So there's a huge amount of benefits that can be used to build a return on investment case.